What's up guys? We're back for another day of the, I guess, first kind of, you know, few things we're doing, showing you guys in the process of my sprint journey here. So the last video you would have seen us doing all, me and Justin doing all our assessment stuff at the Revive Gym. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, it was very cool for me to kind of see all the metrics, you know, from like mobility standpoint to, you know, static force standpoint. So all these things kind of see where my body was um, and excited to see how these numbers kind of change over time. So, you know, that was really cool, really interesting for me. I'm sure you guys, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed that. But we're here today at Chris's gym. Um, we're gonna do like an actual more workout kind of style thing today, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Justin can give you a rundown here, kind of what we're gonna do today, so. Yeah, so after uh, after we went through the assessment, I think it was like 90 minutes yep. or so, like after the 90 minute assessment, uh, we got all the pieces that I need to build out the program. It's gonna take a good like 72 hours to build it out. But uh, in the meantime, I wrote up a nice, a nice little dime of a program. Uh, so we're gonna go through that. Lots of foot stuff that we're gonna do. Um, Cause again, that's what the people want is the foot stuff. <laughs> yeah, the foot uh, stuff he, yeah. he, he needs the foot stuff. We're so we're going, views, yeah. yeah, exactly. So we'll go through all that. We'll go through um, some longer duration ISOs. So again, for him, for the past 15 years that he's been a bodybuilder, he's basically been training his body to not be good at sprinting. So now we have to undo it start at the foundation, so lots of isometrics, uh, just to kind of restructure the tissue like we talked about in the last video. Um, it's predominantly lower body, a little bit of upper back, um, but this would be like a day one out of like a three day split that he would do. Um, so pieces of this, he will do in his first program, but for the most part, this is uh, this is just us kind of having some fun today. So it should be good. Cool. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get into this here. We got Chris's nice, hot, unair conditioned gym. So this will be good, good test for me. I'm sure my shirt will be a completely different color very soon. So, uh, so yeah, let's get into this workout and we'll catch you guys in the gym. So again, we're trying to get the, the muscles to actually fire. Yeah. And part of that is an actual like stimulation. So just hands to your side, feet straight. I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna send you a, uh, a link for what's called a tack mat. So before you train and before you do track work, you'll do that and you'll just kind of increase the recruitment of the muscles in the bottom of your feet. But this is like the Jimmy Rake version because it's just stimulating the nerve endings so that while we go through, we should be able to get more of a recruitment in your feet. And by getting more of a recruitment from the muscles in your feet, we'll get more recruitment all the way up through the hip and, and everything else that we're doing. So you, you'll see, you'll see like five months from now when we do this again, your feet will like, they'll yeah. jolt, but right now the nerves are like, yeah. they're not dead, but they're yeah. dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it's really interesting. We'll have like a, we'll have an athlete and they'll have right side problems. Their left foot all do it and they're feeling it and right side is dead, okay. like nothing. So it's very correlated. Here you go. Oh. So again, this is like, this is like with a, with a toddler when they're learning to walk, yeah. everything's very basic. That's the same way that we're treating this. The muscles in your feet are basically dumb. So we have to start like in a language like, where is the bathroom? Yes, no, like yeah. very simple things so that over time we can get more complex. 10 more seconds. And just keep pulling the toes, keep pulling the toes. Try to pull the arch up off the ground. Okay, good. Where do you feel that most? Probably like all in here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Well, this side's gonna be harder. But if any time you need to touch down, that's fine. It's just 60 seconds of work. There you go. And there's even times when guys feel like we have to do it seated first or supported. So that's fine. But over time, you'll get better and better at this. And you'll notice, like, Knee pain, hip pain, back pain, ankle yeah, and foot pain. Feel like everything by ankle, foot, like fire. Exactly, which is what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay, about 15 more seconds and then we'll come out of that one. <laughs> it's a lot harder than it looks, I swear, okay? So now we're going all toes extended hip hinge. So we're taking the toes out of the equation in terms of the balance. So toes are down on the ground? Up, like that. Okay. Yep, toes are up, single leg, and then you're doing 15 hip hinges. Okay, so toes up like that. Yeah, toes up and then hip hinges. That's knee bend, or chest up, yeah, like you're doing an RDL. There you go, there you go. Right now 
you're creating a pull by keeping the toes up and then you're stretching the whole posterior chain. that are in your feet the whole jar up. Yeah, yeah. Go one more, go one more. Whew. You really feel that like right through the fucking, like everything in the foot. And, like, yeah. Well, especially because you, you really only done plantar flexion. Yeah, we're going uh, leaning calf raise and we're going onto the big toe. So leaning at a 15 degree angle, straight arm, hip flexed. Yep, Dorsey flex. Keep the hips towards me. And see how your foot's turned out right now? Keep your foot straight down. Good kind of angle. Yep, two. So we hit 16 on the non-dominant side, so we're going to do 16 on the dominant side. Even if you can get more, anytime there's a bilateral discrepancy and increases risk of injury, and your performance isn't gonna be as good. You're one body, one vehicle. It'd be like if you had a car that had different size tires on either side or different power output side to side, you're not gonna be able to go as fast as you can. Good. Yeah, keep the hip first. That's 60. It's, cr it's crazy, like, you get on the fucking calf raise machines, seated, standing, I can load those fuckers up, 10, 15, 20 reps, no problem, full range of motion. Doing shit like this, just body weight, and like the position is putting you in and putting onto certain parts of your foot. Like it's firing bits in my ankle and like bits of dorsiflexion, especially when we were doing stuff like, you know, with the toes lifted. My body just literally has no idea what the fuck it's doing. So it's crazy to feel like I feel so much through my ankles, calves, tibia. It's definitely working. So now just a different toe position. We're hitting slightly different fibers. So out it's gonna be a little more medial of the gastroc, but also we're stretching a different portion of the fascia. We're gonna do 10 on this one. Yeah, toe in, 10 reps. Is, this is predominantly based around getting all this stronger, but strength is the mother of all quality. So even if someone wanted to increase like the, the size of their calves, yeah. doing stuff like this, like you have weak calves, like for a sprinter, yeah. like your calves would blow up. Yeah. I need that. <laughs> I do this. Uh, so now that we've pumped the, the muscle full of blood and we've uh, increased the proprioception of the muscles that we're working, now we're further stretching the fascia now that it has all the blood in there that's already pushing the walls of it. So he's doing a leaning supported inversion eversion. So straight knee, glute flexed, and without moving the hip, he's inverting and everting the foot. So working all those little muscles in the foot. That's just 60 seconds there. So post supported, the hip is up against this the entire time. You'll flex at the hip as high as you can. The leg goes out as far as you can. Then you're trying to go heel to ear, around, back, down. Then you'll reverse it, heel to ear, knee up, in and down. Just three of these, a little slower. Push the range, push the range, push the range. There you go. Back, heel to ear, bring the knee up, heel to me. Yep. Only thing I want you to change is ear. Don't rush to get to here. Okay. Kick this back and then bring it yeah. out. Heel the ear. Back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heel the ear. Now try to keep the knee back. Heel towards me. Start scooping like this. Yeah, there you go. Push and around down. Oh, good. Okay, other side. Ooh. My ankles feel the most like secure they felt a while oh, you know, everything's bet. like pumped up and feels good like okay so we have first thing first two things we're going to go through is a, a long duration iso so it's uh that's the two to five minute hold one okay. we're doing one for lower body one for upper body extensors okay then we'll move into uh two lower body yielding iso exercises and then uh yeah two of those then we have a little bit of upper back with anterior tip and then we finish with one more ankle thing. It's a Cal Dietz uh, spring ankle. Do you know who Cal Dietz is? I know the names, I don't know. Them. He's a big track guy. He, um, he uh, like a coach and track. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, so 
uh, he uh, he has something called spring ankle. So we'll go through that. I'm gonna set this up. Chest is up nice and high, D to B. You're dropping the knee down, ideally below this plate. Okay. It's a huge stretch in this hip flexor, challenging dorsiflexion slightly, and then you're gonna be holding that for an, a, an accumulative two minutes. Okay. So if you can hit two minutes on the first go, that's wonderful. Okay. But we'll, we'll do warm up. Let's not bank on that. Yeah, yeah. So just warm up first, just do 20 reps on each side, get blood into all of that. And usually in a situation like that, I'd say like, it should look like you have a slight case of Parkinson's. Yeah. Hey, Charles used to say it, so I thought it was funny, so I'd say it. <laughs> and I, I said it to him and he laughed, whatever. Turns out his dad had just gotten diagnosed with Parkinson's. <laughs> I felt like the biggest douche in the world. I was like, okay, I can't say that anymore. <laughs> so you, you should be shaking, but just shaking. You go 30 seconds, you drop, you stand up. Within 10 seconds, you're back in. Okay. Two minutes, it's one set. You'll rest three minutes, then we'll go two minutes the other side. He says one set, but it's actually going to be 25 yeah, sets. Gonna be, be <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a 10 times rest pause. Right there. Deep breaths, chest high, D to B. Indirectly is getting great for the fascia in your foot, too. You oh, yeah, that's, so that's hurt nice. like fuck on the foot. Yeah. In, in three on your first time with 260, that's pretty good. That's fucking hard. That's real good. Oh, shit. So, again, it, 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 by no means do I want to just, like, train you and make you sweat. Yeah. Uh, it was either Tudor Bampa or it, it was some old, like, Russian, like, Olympic sure. weightlifting coach. He said any idiot can make someone sweat, but, like, training someone for, for, for like, performance is a different thing. There's something magic about the two-minute time. So now you got, what was it, 105 on the first side. So we tracked that. Next week when you do this program again, we'd want to have you get 135. Yeah. The next week you would get above two minutes straight, right? And that two minutes of time under tension is going to restructure tissue fast. So having the toe in that position, it's going to stretch the fascia of the foot. 
the knee dropped, stretch your quad, the hip flexor because of D to B. Yeah. So you still have, you still have like two minutes and then we'll go other foot forward. That ain't easy. That's funny because like, not even funny, but it gets to a point where you're like, I can resist it and then it's just like, bam, don't, Dude, nope. <laughs> nope, there's not, nothing left. Yeah. Which honestly, I, I felt like, Hey, we, we were talking about whether you'd be good or not, what I was thinking prior with like yeah. the jumps and everything. Yeah. But with uh, with this one, isometric contractions that long, you're not trained on these oh, by yeah. any means. Like that, honestly, that wasn't bad at all. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Only 13 seconds off of the other side, so that's not a bad drop off at all. Ready, right back in. Minute 30, minute 30, here we go. Keep holding, come on. Three, two, one, good. Oh. Whee. We're done. You can go home. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. That's a quad pump there. Feeling the feet, stretching the feet. And then you're trying, it's like weird because you want to collapse, but then when you actually flex your glutes and keep yourself rigid, it actually makes it easier, but like harder at the same time. So it's like, you're like, I just want to fold in, but then you're like, okay, flex your ass and get the hips through. Keeps you up taller. That's rough. That feels rough. So now we're moving into the version of that for upper body extensors. So again, because your your internal rotators are so tight, preventing you from getting external rotation, we need to open this up. So just like we're restructuring the tissue of everything that you just did there, we're gonna restructure it now with the deficit push-up. So I'll do 20 push-ups for a warm-up. Still like 60 seconds till we go. But you'll go with 20 push-ups. And then it's two minutes holding the bottom position, squeezing your back, lifting your sternum up, basically putting your upper back and shoulders into the right position. Yeah. Spending the two minutes there lets the tissues restructure. Damn. Well, at least there's not two legs on this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny now, even just holding that like position, 
my quads are so fucked that even trying to lock my legs there, they're like, oh. I started to get some serious shakes there. <laughs> I was like, 30 seconds. That's uh, good. I felt good. So, so the, the good news is that was that was really impressive for 260. The bad news is next week we would do 230. So that's, that's good. That's really good. Good start. Where'd you feel it most? Arms, toes even, chest? Yeah, the stretch was good. I started to really feel it trying to squeeze those back, my mid upper back, and then like quads, glutes especially trying to keep that tilt. That's where my legs started, what was shaking, especially after that, you know? Whew. Long duration ISO's done. Now we'll move on to the yielding ISO portion. So this, especially for sprinters, if, if Usain Bolt came to me and he said, I wanna break my record, doing a phase with like overcoming ISOs like we did, but doing this long lever, the force production is insane. Like how much more force they can produce. And this, especially in a toe off is like, real, real big in a sprint. Yeah, so you'll be holding this. We'll see where you're at. It'll either be eight second holds for reps, like I said, or we'll go a 30 to 40 second. Uh, one rep each side. It'll be two to three sets. We'll kind of see how, how your body's sitting. And then it's paired with the pendulum squat. I've been doing at the track, like similar to that, but not on a foam roller, like one foot on the ground, other leg up. And... Yeah, so this one, three reps, three eight second pauses on the way down. So pause at the bottom, or negative, sorry? Three, three pauses. So you'll go down a third, eight second pause, With down half. No, 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 oh. no, 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 that would be tough. We did like a, like a over one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, three, uh, eight second pause in the mid range. Eight second pause, like two inches from the bottom, down, up all the way, three reps. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and again, this is this is our first workout together, and this is like you're you're extremely trained and conditioned for what you do. Yeah. This is slightly different. So sure. I'm, 
I'm, I'm half wanting to get a really good stimulus with a singular set. If we can get the three sets that are written out, yeah. great. If we if we hit a banger on like set two, then we move on. Cool. This is fun. But set set one isn't going to be as difficult. Sure. There's something so fun and refreshing and challenging about like having done one thing at such an elite level at such like you know especially with training you know i think that was something i was really known for is like you know my execution my strength my intensity in training and then just transitioning into something that's like completely different it's such a fun challenge you know so it's uh, it's exciting top one is tough, the middle is tougher, and it's like you go up and you start again, you're like, each middle one's just getting harder and harder. How much, uh, how much do you feel your hamstring resting on your calf on the bottom third? Uh, in the bottom third one, none. None? No, when I go to the bottom, to the bottom and out, then I can feel the touch, yeah. but in the bottom of the rep, I don't feel it. That's very interesting. So obviously the, the strength curve on a pendulum is very top accentuated, and a, uh, a squat in general is an ascending strength curve, strongest at the top, weakest at the bottom. Sure. But still, that's interesting that the, the bottom isn't as sub, it's more the middle. It's very interesting. When you've squatted, you squat it, yeah, ass to grass. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, I did regular just feet on ground. As I got older, I did do heel elevated. Oh, okay. There you go, there you go. Okay, hands here, head back. Okay, lift the left leg off, and you're holding it. Dorsey points. There you go. Okay, keep the hips high. By about 10 seconds in on this one, the hamstring feels like it's going to explode. Okay, keep holding, keep holding. Here's 20. We're looking for the 30 to 40 second range. Thirty. Let's see if we can get to forty. Yep. Keep holding. Five, four, three, two. Get <sighs> down. Ten seconds rest in between sides. So anytime you do unilateral stuff, usually people rest anyways. But it increases the recruitment of high threshold motor units with ten seconds rest in between. So always, always, always give it just like a slight second. Okay. Up on both right leg. Up. Riding a little weight, doing that same thing. 888 on the pendulum. 
What exactly does this help? So the the isometrics, whenever you do an isometric, it increases the strength and the, the motor unit recruitment for specific ranges of motions. So like if I only ever did curls like this, I'd get really strong in this range. I'd be weak in the two extremes though. So what he's doing is he's spending an eight second pause in each position, helps with the recruitment there, helps with the range of motion, helps with the tissue regeneration and uh, change in tissue. But also having a pause allows the IGF-1 molecule to go into the muscle cell, so it's really good for tissue regeneration. Uh, in his case, this is more of an intro to ISOs, but like those are some of the reasons why you can use it. Six, five, four, three, two, one half, wait, come on. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, bottom, eight, seven, six, come on, four, three, two, down up. No. There you go, that's perfect. That's a good top set. Woo! That's a good top set. Holy shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, bud. How you feel? Fuck, that was hard. That last one. I got into the middle section of the last one. That said, the bottoms actually were the hardest one that time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, what part of the part of that is probably the yielding ISO? And that's mid-range for that front leg. So that was probably just fucked. Yeah. The second and third rep, the bottom section, was by far the hardest. Yeah. Cool. And we're, we're looking for one more on the long left. We're going to go to level two. This is level one. This is level two. That's level three. And then we'll load it. But we'll go to here, 30 to 40 second holds. this exact workout, we'd probably do the two sets at level two so that the, uh, the average load per se is higher. Okay, left leg. Yep, 30 seconds. Yeah, there you go, pull the toes. Good. 15 seconds left, keep holding. Keep the glutes through. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, good. Oh yeah. Done with those. Done with those. That's a serious on the hamstrings. So in a lot of cases, like after after doing the A series of B. Well, so we did all the proprioceptive stuff with the B. We did the A series, the B series. This was technically the C series. After this, in most cases, we'd probably just go to like spring ankle and anterior tip. Okay. But we're here, so we're gonna give her. So we'll do, uh, it's a uh, banded neck extension. When was the last time you did neck extensors? Like, never, never. So anytime you recruit your neck extensors, it increases the nervous system efficiency to all upper body movements. Okay. So like if you were ever in like a bench press competition, and you did neck extensions yeah. prior, it would add a little bit. Okay. That's like a cheat. Yeah. But in this case, we're gonna use it to help bring up your weaklings. Yeah. So you'll do a neck extension with the band first, then you'll move into a trap three raise. Right. So it's gonna increase the neural drive to your trap three, so you get stronger faster, yeah. which is what we want in this yeah. case. Uh, you have that, and it's paired with an anterior tip, two to three sets, and then spring ankle is just one set, and then you're done. And you're done. You'll step back, and then the chin, it's not this, it's back, like you're doing a double chin. And you're gonna hold. Tucking the chin. Yeah, eight second hold, relax. Eight second hold, relax. Three reps? Uh, five. Five reps. You, give yourself another third. Okay. Five. I wasn't lying about my shirt. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. We're two thirds of the way discolored now. Eight, seven, six. Push this back. Four, three, two, one. Go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Adjust the bandage. Two, one. Go. Eight, seven, six. 
this back. Four, three, two, one, one more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, good. Oh. Feel that all the way down my back. Yeah. Do you get a slight head rush after two? A little bit. So we Now that you said it, I'm like feeling it. It's coming now. I was going to say, you want, whenever you do neck extensor, you should get a little head rush. I felt That's like how that. you know it's like heavy enough. Yeah. But I want to loosen your skate. Look you into that pack. Oh, yeah, like you're going to get here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are tight. Okay, chin to chest. Uh, on the side of the side. Towards my finger. There you go. Up. Over and away. Yep. Look back more though. Okay. Way. Okay, up as high as you can. Up over and away. Okay. Can you feel those crackles? Oh, yeah. That's all I need. Okay, go. Up. a wall anterior tibialis raise. I had written a unilateral anterior tip for 20, but I don't like the strength curve. Up against the post, hands on hips, and it's just up, pause, down, up, pause, down. your head into a wall but with anything that's more sport and nervous system related yeah. there's a point and yeah. then you're just wasting time and digging a big hole for you to come out of so for today two sets will be good and then we'll do the spring ankle and the foots okay eight second holds here we go Over time, usually the rule of thumb is you want to increase load by two and a half percent every week. In this case, adding load, I mean like, for example, if you're to train here, yeah, like I, I would eat like at our gym, we have like 0.25 yeah. and 0.5. Yeah. It's like even doing things like that would be good. Sure. Uh, but in this case, let's say you're training here, you know, like, I would just reps. Yeah, I'd do the house. Perfect. I think I even have one pound ones actually. Good.
spring ankle uh, level one, position one. So it's heels down as far as you can, deep knee bend, and then you're gonna pick one leg off. This is just replicating all the different ankle, knee, and hip positions in a sprint. Okay. So this is one of them, but for you, because you're lacking dorsiflexion, yeah. this is the position we'll start with. Yeah, deep ankle bend, deep knee, keep the knee going right over the second toe and don't let the hip pop out, keep the hip that way. That's 30 right there. And same concept here with the ice that we're just creating more recruitment for the fiber, keeping that range, restructuring the tissues. Deep knee bend, deep knee bend. Really push it forward. 15 seconds. There? Yeah, there you go, there you go. That's 30. All of Three quarters. We got three quarters. All right, guys. So that's a wrap. Um, I mean, I don't think really anything here I'd ever done before. And obviously, motions like the pendulum I've done, but obviously not doing the ISO holds. You know, some things I've done in different ways, but like when I was doing track, fucking two decades ago almost. Um, you know, and like Justin was saying, you know, the the ways neurologically my muscles are trained to fire, like the complete opposite in like a negative way almost from what they're designed to for bodybuilding, right? Or bodybuilding for sprinting. So, you know, kind of retraining everything. You can see like doing everything, I'm fucking shaking like a leaf. Like, you know, everything's trying to fire and kind of catch up, but it's uh, feels really good. You know, it's a fun challenge. I'm really excited to get into this and see how my body can progress and uh, see the changes of this over time. So it's very exciting. You know, like I was saying before, when you've done one thing for so long with like the exact same goal, you know, to test your body and your mind uh, in a different way is very fun and very exciting, especially for me as someone, you know, that's very competitive, competitive against myself um, and likes to stay driven towards new goals. You know, it really makes me feel fulfilled. So very excited for this. Thank you a lot to Justin for coming out yesterday and today. I had a ton of fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed the videos. Um, you can check him out. You guys Instagram is better. I uh, feel better, yeah, yeah. Yeah, www.billbetter-az.com. Out of Arizona, like Scottsdale area, right? Scottsdale area, so uh, you guys can check them out on Instagram, website, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this was awesome. Really excited to see the program we get together here and see how things go over the next few months. But hope you guys enjoyed all the assessment yesterday and the first workout today. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time for another one of these. See you later.